Hey guys, you know the last time that I cried for an animated movie was when I watched The Lion King? That was decades ago. I never thought that I would be emotional again watching another animated movie. If you guys have never seen Elemental, I highly recommend it. In fact, it was so good that I decided to create one of the main characters in there named Wade. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create Wade from Elemental using a free software called Blender. Hope you guys enjoy! The most important process before creating anything is gathering references. There were some photos that I found from Google, but what also helped was renting the actual movie from Amazon. With the Elemental movie, I was able to access better views of Wade. Having the front view, side view, back view, and quarter view are essential parts of the process. Also, having the character in different lighting conditions really helped because I was able to visualize exactly how the structure of the face and body look like as the shadows that cast on the character can give a different perspective. I spent about two hours collecting references. Let me tell you, in my experience in the 3D industry, I was always praised for being great and thorough at gathering references and how accurate I am when creating 3D models. I have to tell you guys, if you really want to be a 3D artist, you have to get used to spending hours being resourceful and collecting your own reference photos. The next step was sculpting. When it comes to sculpting, I spend the most time polishing the basic shapes of the character. This is the most important part of sculpting whether you are doing a stylized character or a realistic character. The basic form is the foundation of what makes up the overall shape of the character. When I sculpted the basic forms of Wade, it came a lot easier for me because of my knowledge of the human anatomy. Even if Wade is not 100% human, there is a reminiscent of human forms in him such as the face, the arms, hands, torso, and his overall posture. Understanding the basics of the human anatomy definitely help with creating the character much faster and much more accurately. After sculpting, I proceeded to retopologizing. Even though I had no intention of animating Wade, I made sure that the topology still corresponds with the animation-ready workflow. From my experience, if you make your topology flow properly, make the essential loops, and have clean geometry, you are going to have an easier time refining it. You won't need to worry about pitching on the surface, and you won't have any weird shading issues. So yeah guys, having a nice clean topology goes a long way. Even though you have no plans of animating a character, and you just want to make a nice render, you need to have nice clean topology. Once I have my new topology for the character, I moved on to unwrapping. To contribute to high resolution textures and renders later on, I made three different UV sets. One for the body, one for the shirt, and one for the eyes. Once I have all of my UVs done, I added the multi-resolution modifier on the character so I could build on the secondary forms. The secondary forms consisted of subtle volumes on the cheeks, breakups on the hair, his eyelids, and details on the shirt. Wade doesn't have any abs, pores, wrinkles, or veins, and so I did not have to do any tertiary forms at all. So the baking process was actually a quick one for this particular character. I baked the minor details that I added on the body. I also baked the details on the shirt, which I will be able to use later on as a guide of where I'm going to be painting the colors. I have also made sure that my character was in real world size. That way, when I add caustic lights or effects later on, the values won't be so far off. Wade is wearing a semi-tight shirt with an interesting pattern on it. For that pattern, I have used a Voronoi texture, which is my favorite texture inside Blender by the way. You can make so much variety of patterns with the Voronoi texture. So I used this texture as a normal bump and combined it with my normal map of my sculpting details using the bump node. Now, I know that the pattern is not covering all parts of the shirt, and so I had to paint a custom mask to control where I want the pattern to show. After painting the custom mask, I plugged that into the strength of the bump node. For the color of the shirt, I went with the manual process of hand painting where I want the whites and the purple pinks to go. 
the entire time I was painting, the material preview was on so that I can see the normal matte bumps on the shirt so I could tell where I need to start and end the paint. To add more spice to the shirt, I mixed a noise texture and a Voronoi texture with my hand-painted color texture. Now, one of the most fun parts of this project was creating the stylized water material and texture. It was a challenging process and I have learned a lot from it. To get that stylized 3D water look, I combined the glass BSDF shader with the Tune BSDF shader. And to give the material a bit of glow, I plugged in a principal BSDF shader onto the volume of the material output. Then I changed the emission color and increased the emission strength to provide the cool looking gleam on the water material. To create a darker tone on the eyebrows and the eyelids, I hand painted the texture and pointed it to the color of the Tune BSDF. For Wade's eyes, I started out with painting a blue circle, then painted a black circle, added the outline around the edges of the blue circle, and then polished it with some dark tones and highlights to further enhance his innocent eyes. The lighting was quite an interesting process. I created three lights in the scene. One light is for the rim light, which goes at the back of the character to separate him from the background. Another light is the fill light, which goes to the side of the character and illuminates the areas that had too much dark shadows. And the most important light, which is the main light. For that main light, I set it right above the character at an angle. This light is special because it's what I had chosen to inherit, the caustic effect. To give the light a caustic effect, I created a Voronoi texture which I first assigned to a basic plane so I can view how it appears. Now after I have achieved the caustic texture effect, I copied and pasted the set of nodes onto the light. In order for the texture to emit from the light, the UV texture coordinates had to be set to normal and the light must be a spotlight which must have a high intensity. To breathe life to a character, you must pose him in a way that will portray his personality. Wade seems to me like a softy, a true lover, and not a fighter. I tilted his head and gave him an innocent gaze and gently raised his eyebrows. I placed his hands together, gracefully adorning his chest, as if to transmit a mix of uncertainty and hope dedicated to the person who has captured his heart, which is in this case, Ember. After posing, I rendered 4K high-definition render shots and composited them in Photoshop. I implemented a sunset background and a stylized mountain cliff which I had found from freepick.com. I chose these backgrounds because it worked best with the majestic feel of the movie. I did not want the background to overpower the main subject and so I added a blur to it which further manifested the type of mood that I was going for. Guys, I really love this project. I was able to expand my creative boundaries. As you all know that I mainly do realistic characters, but venturing into stylized ones had really been an amazing experience. I was able to really see the value of silhouettes and the art of creating more complex materials and just infusing life and emotion to non-human characters. I hope you guys enjoyed my process and I hope to see you guys in the next future Victory 3D videos.